We are just weeks away from Major League Baseball's opening day, and they are making sure players are clear on the new policy surrounding marijuana. The league removed marijuana from its list of banned substances back in December, but a new memo released last week outlined the details of the new policy. So players will still be subject to discipline if they are caught using or possessing the drug. David Sampson joins us now from Fort Lauderdale. He is the host of CBS Sports uh, podcast, Nothing Personal. So, David, we need sort of a little clarification here. What does this warning mean for players heading into the regular season play? Well, what it means is that right now marijuana is not being tested for at the major league level. So major league players can go ahead and continue smoking if that's what they were doing or however they were using marijuana. But what Major League Baseball wanted to be clear is that the law of the land still stands. Mm. So if you're in an area where le pot is not legal, then you cannot smoke it because you will be in violation of a federal or state law. And you cannot take pot out of city. So, for example, a very popular thing is when teams play in Denver, they would go to a dispensary, get marijuana, put it on the team plane, and bring it back to their home cities. Those teams not in Canada where you go through customs, it was never really an issue, but MLB wants to make sure that they're on record that these players could be in violation and would be in violation if they carry marijuana over state lines. How does the policy for Major League Baseball compare to other pro sport leagues in the U.S.? Well, there has been testing in the National Football League, and that's one of the interesting things about the new collective bargaining agreement that is being voted on as we speak by the NFL players. Interestingly enough, the new agreement calls for the lack of testing and penalties for marijuana, and the players in the NFL were thrilled with that, and the owners were just as happy to give it that's not a real economic loss for the owners, but the players were willing to give in order to get that. So marijuana can be used by management in order to get players to give what they otherwise would not have given. What about uh, other leagues like, you know, the NFL and the NBA? What are their policies? Are they wrestling with, you know, how to handle marijuana? Yeah, so every league has a different policy, and, and what they're doing is they're watching as the laws in the, in the land change. So what we would do in baseball is we're paying attention and making sure that we keep every team informed as to what's going on in each individual state. That said, until it becomes legal from a federal standpoint, no leagues can ever go out and say, you may now smoke marijuana. What they can do as part of a collective bargain agreement is say, listen, we're not testing for it, we're not suspending you for it, but it still remains a scheduled drug according to the law. Late last year, we saw the opioid overdose of Angels pitcher Tyler Skaggs. Is opioid, uh, is that still an issue in the MLB? And is the league hoping to curb it by easing up on marijuana policies? So did you just mention, I, I, I didn't hear what you were asking about the policy. So uh, I'm, I'm asking if the, the easing of marijuana policy is in a way to curb uh, perhaps uh, the addictions in other narcotics. So the question is, you're asking, do we view that marijuana is a gateway drug and how does that impact the use of opioids in baseball and in other sports? That is something that we wrestled with for years and I wrestled with for 18 years, thinking about how to handle players' pain. Opioids are used to help with pain relief and reduction for players who in football are getting hit hard every week. In baseball, they've got to get themselves ready to play every single day. In basketball, you've got joint injuries. So the question is, is there any proof that we can say that when players are smoking pot that they are more apt to get addicted to opioids? I did not find in my whole career that we had opioid addicts that had anything to do with the fact that they were smoking pot. What I did find, however, is many, many players do smoke pot, and that is in order to get them relaxed after games, before games, not during games, but just in order to relax because players tend to be very stressed and they live a very stressed lifestyle. Um, you know, a lot of people swear by the uh, positive effects of CBD, right? There's no THC in it. Um, where does uh, Major League Baseball stand on CBD products? 
yeah, there are a lot of players who use it because it works. And I can't tell you whether it's psychological or not, but as a team executive, I didn't really care whether it was psychological. If a player is complaining of back or knee pain and uses CBD and all of a sudden can play, that was my main concern is making sure they're on the field. I personally am a marathon runner, and I have used it, and to me it works as well. And again, I don't know if that is psychological or physical, but it doesn't matter because it gets my shoes on. <laughs> All right. Uh, players are still not allowed to invest in marijuana. Is this also an issue on the mind of players? Yeah, that's something that, that we try to protect players from in general. One of the biggest ways that our players end up broke in their future lives after sports is they make all sorts of investments without really thinking about it, whether it's restaurants with their names on it or startup companies where people around them say, just give me a million dollars or two million dollars. The cannabis industry has so many startups. I've spoken to so many players about that because they're promised, hey, not only will you get rich, but you'll get as much cannabis as you could ever want or smoke or need. <laughs> and I basically tell the players to stay away. <laughs> That's probably good advice. Yeah, right. Dave Sampson, thank you very much.